Hello, uh, in this video I'm going to be installing, um, well configuring and installing Linux on an STM32 uh, F429 discovery board. Uh, this board has an STM32 F429 chip along with uh, an 8 megabyte uh, RAM chip. And uh, we really need that RAM chip in order to run Linux because we're going to be uh, configuring Linux to both run from Flash and then I'm going to show you how to make it run from the from the actual uh, RAM on the board. And uh, what's um, uh, interesting about this video is that I'm not going to be using U-Boot, I'm not going to be using any um, uh, any stock bootloader uh, and instead I'm going to be uh, just, I'm going to fit everything into the Flash and I'm going to use a very simple bootloader which is about 160k um, and it's um, called AF Boot uh, which is available on GitHub at uh, mm uh, kukulin uh, stm32 af boot stm32 uh, and this very simple bootloader what it does is basically it allows you to uh, configure the memory chip and load the kernel into the ram uh, and then run the kernel uh, well default configuration is actually running the kernel from the flash uh, and um, uh, for that it uses the it runs actually the x exip image uh, of linux uh, so there are several images, there is Z image, there is U image, and there is XIP image, and XIP image is the one that uh, executes in place. Uh, so for the XIP image we can actually set the base address of the Linux kernel, uh, and then we can copy it into that address either in Flash or in RAM, and then it will run from that address. So let's see how it's actually done. Um, so we're starting with um, a clean config. Uh, let me just remove all of the files um, just to make sure that we have a clean config and uh, we are going to be actually running um, a new um, menu config so um, for the for the start I'm going to be creating a tiny config for STM32 so we're going to do uh, make arch arm uh, and then specify an output directory where we're going to be building our image. Uh, and uh, we're going to create a tiny config. Now this config is um, it basically does not include anything. Uh, it's the minimal Linux config. So if we just build our kernel like this, it's not going to work. Uh, therefore, we need to uh, start menu config and uh, configure the features that we want in our kernel. Now, I'm going to go through uh, the features from the start and um, let's see what we actually need here. We need, um, we need, uh, let's start with the stuff we know. We need a block layer. Um, or actually we don't need that because we're not actually going to be running uh, a RAMFS uh, on this but um, we can enable that anyway because that's, that allows us to later build a RAMFS and embed it into the kernel. Now system type um, is ARM STM32M4 uh, and we choose the STM Electronics STM32 family and um, we need to also Let's see, um, set the flash uh, and RAM size. So base address for the RAM on this discovery board is 9000000. 000 000, and the size is uh, 8 and the flash is located at uh, 8, uh, 800, uh, 8 million. And the flash size, I think we can leave it as four. No, we, we, we'll actually change this. Yeah, this is the flash size. Let, let me just check this. So uh, if we do this and do 200,000 and convert that into decimal. No, damn it. Uh, let's see. Let's try this. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. Let's see. This 
this is the actual size of our flash and we convert it to hexadecimal and we get 200,000. Good. Um, so um, then we will go farther and see what else we need to enable. Uh, bus support, uh, kernel features. Um, do we need anything here? Uh, not at the moment. Uh, support for traditional A tags. Uh, unfortunately, I have, to, I have to enable this option because the kernel will not boot and will complain that there is no support for A tags. I don't know why it does that. Um, but uh, I have to enable this support even though we're not actually using A tags. We're going to be using the device tree. Uh, let's see. Kernel command string. Um, I'll leave that empty for now. And um, kernel execute in place from ROM. This is actually something we definitely need. And we're going to set the address first to flash, and we're going to set the base address to 8000. Now, the way we're going to organize our memory is that in the beginning of the flash at 0800000, uh, we're going to be placing our bootloader, which is the AF boot bootloader. Now, at 0800-2000, we're going to be placing our device tree. And uh, the device tree is going to span slightly more than 16K. So um, there will be a little bit of free space left there for uh, future extensions to the device tree. And the actual kernel we're going to be placing at 8000 uh, offset from the start of flash. So I'm going to set this address to 8000 and I'm going to go ahead and uh, configure the rest of the kernel. So let's see, floating point, we don't need that, user space, um, well we can enable like flat binaries, um, support for MISC binaries. Um, let's see, power management, we don't actually need binary formats because I'm going to be just showing you how to get to in it. I'm not going to be showing you how to actually boot a root FS. Um, because simply because I have not yet got that to work. Um, let's see. Device drivers, we definitely need a TTY device driver. Um, and for that, we're going to go ahead and enable. Uh, Character devices enable TTY and serial drivers. We're gonna enable the STM32 serial driver uh, and support for console and STM32. Uh, what this option allows us to do is use early print K. Uh, and then we can go ahead and um, uh, let's see. And I also want to enable print K. So we need that. We can enable bug. We can enable, let's see. Well, that's pretty much uh, it for now. And um, what else? Uh, firmware drivers, don't need that. File systems. Um, file systems, we don't really need that. Uh, let's see what we get if we just go ahead and build the kernel. Um, I'm just gonna see if there's anything I need here. Uh, let's do low level debugging. Um, the thing is, that doesn't actually work because it doesn't have an option yet to uh, output the low-level messages from uh, the STM32 UART. So um, that's unusable right now. Let's see. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, not so much more to it. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just build this kernel. Um, and for that, I'm going to do cross compile uh, arm uh, Linux GNU Yabi, and I'm going to build it in the directory of build stm32 f429. 
uh, and I'm going to use four threads uh, for buildings. Uh, so now it's going to be building the kernel and uh, while it's doing that uh, I'm going to show you what the bootloader does. So afboot is a very simple bootloader uh, where you specify your kernel address uh, and your de device tree address and uh, it initializes uh, your board. So for the discovery we're going to be running this file. It sets up the clock uh, and it sets up the main memory uh, and then it uh, outputs a small dot on the UART uh, which is going to be in this case the UART number one which is connected to A9 and A10 pin and uh, after that it's uh, going to call start kernel which uh, will actually just uh, call the kernel uh, starting point. Uh, and in this case, it's going to be the address, uh, as you remember from the configuration uh, of the exit image. Uh, the address would be 0, 8, uh, 0, 0, uh, 8000, uh, which is where our um, flat uh, kernel binary is going to be placed uh, in flash. Uh, and um, um, when the Linux kernel starts, it actually already expects the RAM to be initialized. So that's why you need something like this to, uh, to do the low level initialization. And it's actually very good because uh, if uh, you want, you can copy the kernel into, um, uh, into uh, the RAM and run it from RAM as well. Um, in this case, I'm gonna comment this out for now and I'm gonna run the kernel just from the, uh, from from the flash, um, which is also the default uh, when you um, uh, when you download this bootloader. Let's see what changes I've done to it so far. Um, I have changed. Um, I made a few changes to it. Uh, for example, the default uh, device tree address is 4000, uh, but unfortunately, if I place it at 4000, it doesn't fit uh, because this is uh, designed for an older kernel, which is which has a much smaller device tree. Um, and I'm using the latest one, which has a little bit more in the device tree. So I place it at uh, 2000 instead. Uh, and also I've been experimenting a little bit with the initial RAM disk, um, but uh, I need to actually build a RAM disk for this particular kernel because uh, the RAM disk that uh, I found online, uh, which is uh, the minimal CPIO image for STM32, it doesn't actually work out of the box because it's compiled for a different kernel. Um, and uh, then I also made this little change for um, for booting the kernel from RAM. Uh, but um, right now we're not going to be booting it from RAM. Instead, we're going to be booting it from Flash. And for that, I'm going to make sure that we have the right addresses here. Uh, yeah, we have the kernel address at 8000 and the DTB address at 2000. Uh, that's great. Um, Let's m just build this and then I'm going to copy it to our uh, Linux folder. So now our uh, exit image is ready uh, and uh, the only thing we need to do now to do a little test, um, I'm pretty sure it's not going to work on the first try, um, but um, we're still going to try it and then we're going to fine-tune the config to make sure that it actually boots into the to the line where it tries to run in it. So let's see. Um, now we need to flash this into into the STM32. And um, the way I do it is that I create an image first and then I uh, use the ST flash utility to just flash everything at one go. Um, and uh, I've written a small script that does this, uh, which is called um, flash uh, shell and it's just uh, it just makes a few checks to make sure that things are not um, uh, let's see that is actually an error um, so let's see write that like that. Uh, so what it does is it just uh, creates a file first, uh, which is uh, one megabyte in size. 
um, in this case we can actually create a file um, yeah we could have created two megabytes but that's it doesn't really matter in this case because we are uh, going to be extending the file uh, with the command that actually copies uh, the kernel into the into the splash uh, image uh, so that we don't have to write more than uh, the code that we have uh, and then it copies the bootloader into the beginning of the flash then it copies the DTB and it finally copies the kernel and flashes it into the flash at 0800000. So let's run this script and see what happens. Kernel will not fit. Okay, of course it won't fit because it's um, actually, let's see, we're supposed to be using uh, the Supposed to be using that number instead. Um, and then we have to subtract also minus 1024 times, let's see, 32. That's the maximum size of the kernel we can fit into this image. So let's update that one. So let's flash it and let's see what happens. The flashing process is extremely slow. It takes ages to flash in the kernel. So, so it booted. It actually booted on the first try. I guess I've been doing this so many times now that I actually got it to work on the first try. Um, so as you can see here, uh, it correctly identifies the processor as ARMv7 uh, and STM32F429 disk board. This is actually from the device tree. Uh, and this is our memory map uh, where we have our um, virtual memory. And the low mem is the RAM, which is uh, eight megabyte on this board. Uh, and for some reason, uh, this stuff didn't actually print out correctly. But that doesn't really matter because it, it booted anyway. Um, and then we have all this SDM32 drivers, um, which uh, configure all the devices. By the way, if somebody knows why uh, this um, these values aren't actually printed correctly, please let me know. Now, uh, so it, it's not able to mount root, uh, and uh, this is normal, um, and uh, we really don't care for it right now. Uh, because all we have to do is uh, create a, a, a rootfs, which we can boot into. But um, I guess w what we could do is we can figure out in the kernel where this uh, message is actually coming from, and we can um, try to uh, write our own little task inside the kernel, which will kind of simulate the, um, uh, the application uh, that we may put on this board. Because it, it really doesn't matter on the STM32 uh, whether you're in user space or in kernel space. It's the same thing. There is no memory protection. Uh, there is no uh, difference between the kernel space and user space. Uh, so pretty much you can create tasks in the kernel space uh, just like you would do on an Artus uh, platform. Um, and uh, just have the benefit of kind of reusing a lot of code from the Linux kernel instead of uh, having to write all the low level stuff yourself. Uh, I guess that's the biggest benefit of running Linux on this STM32. Um, 
um, it's, it's really like um, you, you can do a lot of things with Linux, like you can mount file systems, you can access network, uh, you can um, uh, reuse a lot of existing code. Uh, which is very beneficial uh, and um, the real benefit is actually if you load the Linux kernel from uh, from an external memory like an SPI flash where you can actually make the kernel bigger than than two megabytes um, and if you if you include a lot of modules uh, and a lot of features it's actually going to be more than two two megabytes that you have uh, in the internal flash um, but uh, the bootloader can do that and that's really um, uh, it's really practical to do it that way. Uh, we can try to uh, boot the, um, let's see, we can try to boot the kernel from the, um, from, from the RAM. Uh, and to do that, I'm gonna set the kernel address to RAM base uh, in the bootloader. And I'm gonna recompile this bootloader and then I'm gonna copy it there and then I'm gonna also let's see I'm gonna also do the copy of the kernel from the flash into the RAM And uh, I've written another script that can flash just the bootloader and the device tree. Uh, and um, actually, I want to show you the device tree. Uh, let's see. In the device tree, I have configured the console to be on STM uh, zero device. Which is actually important because that's the that's what the device is called, um, and uh, I've also set the memory to start at two hundred thousand, uh, and I set the size to be a little bit smaller uh, because I wanted to be able to copy the kernel into the beginning of the memory. Uh, if I set this to the default value, then the kernel will actually just overwrite it itself uh, after it starts, and it won't really boot. Uh, so it's important that if you run the kernel from RAM, you have to set RAM start address at 200,000 so that you can fit the copy of the flash into the RAM. Um, and um, if we flash this uh, to the board, uh, it won't actually boot. And the reason for that is because we haven't updated the XIP image starting address. Uh, so we have to do that. Uh, and we can do that by uh, modifying the config. And it's number four. And this address, uh, we have to change it to the starting address inside the RAM. Now we can uh, build the kernel again. And it's gonna actually recompile the whole kernel because we have changed the base address of the whole kernel. Um, so we have to wait until it's done. And then once we copy the new kernel, it should actually boot from RAM. And we can double check that it actually boots from RAM.
So, there it is. Um, let's flash this one. It has to erase every sector because it, before it actually flashes the flash and that's the time consuming part of it. And now it's writing the flash. So let's see what happens here. Will it boot or, or will it not boot? It didn't boot. Uh, okay, so clearly something's wrong. Uh, let's debug what went wrong. Uh, to do that, I'm going to be using ARM non Yavi GDB uh, and um, I'm going to be loading the VM Linux executable into it. Uh, now, I don't think I've enabled kernel debugging, so I probably am not going to see any symbols in this. No debugging symbols found. So let's go back and let's rebuild our kernel with debugging symbols. And the option for that is called, uh, let's see, strip uh, device port unstrip target. Uh, let's see. I need to have unstripped target. Why? Let's see. Compile kernel with debug info. I wonder what this option is called. Ah, uh, config debug info. Right. Uh, so, uh, we can just enable uh, that option and nothing else, and that should give us the debug symbols. So, we have to rebuild the kernel, and we have to do exactly the same thing once again and rebuild the whole thing again, and then flash it again, and it's gonna take time. Uh, but we're going to be, um, or no, actually we don't need to flash it because, um, we just need to load the new executable into GDB, uh, and it will give us the debug symbols. That's all we need right now. So all I have to do is just recompile it, not reflash it. I think I know what the problem is. I think uh, the problem is that we haven't changed our DRAM base. That's why we are getting an issue here. I'm gonna in fact just do that. I'm gonna go ahead and change, change our DRAM base. Uh, where is our DRAM 3? Yes, of course. So this is the issue. We haven't updated our DRAM base uh, to point to the location in DRAM where we can uh, allocate memory. Uh, so what the kernel was doing it is it was actually overriding itself. So we do that and um, we can then build this kernel and I think we should be able to boot it. Okay. 
So for some reason, reason there is a, a device tree option that specifies your memory, and then there is also drum base option uh, which specifies uh, the memory in the config. And you have to remember to update both if you change uh, the starting address of your RAM uh, where you want to allocate the kernel memory. just curious um, where this is used so uh, I guess what is actually happening here is that uh, our memory management no MMO, uh, this is the code that's gonna run on our STM32 uh, and uh, let's see drum base So it sets uh, the base and then it sets the V bar. Yeah, so it, it sets the exception uh, base address uh, into RAM base. Uh, so it, it puts the it puts the vector table uh, into the base of the RAM. So if we have kernel code there, it's actually. <laughs> <laughs> gonna overwrite the kernel code with that information. So let's try this. Yeah. And by the way, uh, in the init folder uh, in Linux, there is the simple init code which tries to mount the rootfs system and then run init executable. Try to run init process. it booted check it out so um, this is where we were before we have s dot s dot s and now we have finally booted Linux when we updated the, the RAM base address and we have gone to the um, VFS uh, mount root uh, unable to mount root so that's uh, that's it I guess fun stuff fun stuff running